are live. Can I get a confirmation? Am I live in like the Facebook group or something? It would be really good to know because I have not got a clue. Are we live? Live on channel five. This is Lee Jackson live. Live, 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 live. Right. Uh, I'm just waiting for a comment, folks, so that I know we're, we're live somewhere, that we're streaming somewhere. Any second now, I'm going to get a comment to say that we're definitely live. Maybe I should just start. I am going to rock on and start. So, folks, welcome. This is our community call with a difference. Um, my name is Lee Jackson, and I am the lead of the agency Trailblazer community. We've got a whole load of folks in here with us right now in the Zoom link. So they're in the chat, and I can see them over on my screen over here. Yes, we're live on Cloudways, which is awesome. Thank you very much, Tristan. So. Um, we are live streaming this conversation. What it'll be is it's going to be set up with me doing a little bit of a presentation at first. And this is kind of a, um, a packed down presentation on some ways that you could save money and things that I have used in the past that have really helped me. I'll give you a bit of backstory, etc. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get some of the people in on of Zoom to come and have a conversation with us. So for example, you're going to be hearing from Tristan. Tristan will jump on later on after this, and he's going to share some of his money saving tips, including a really clever one from Amazon, <laughs> which I'm not going to share with you spoiler no no spoilers so um what i would love to do first of all is let's take this uh, little lower third off and i am gonna rock on with the initial presentation so i would love for you to listen to this make some notes and also let me know of any questions that you have now my good friend tristan has just volunteered he didn't even know this but if there are any questions that you guys put in the live feed also some of the cloudways teams are going to be having a look to see if they can see any of the questions that you guys are going to put out there and they are going to send me them on slack and tristan's going to be sending well volunteered leanne's going to do it as well thank you leanne um and people are going to paste those questions into my Zoom as well so that I am aware of what questions are coming in. So we are now going to switch over from me to the presentation with a really nice transition. Oh, yeah. So, folks, let's talk about money-saving tips, ideas, tricks, and so on. And what I want to do really is I want to unpack. Oh, and thank you very much, Cloudways, for sponsoring us as always. Cloudways are incredible. They power all of our websites and they are helping us make this happen and helping us get this message to so many more people because of these uncertain times. So um, we are living in uncertain times. And right now, a lot of people are looking for ways to be way more efficient with their money. So the purpose of this community call for our agency trailblazers, but also for everyone who's watching us on the live feed, is to brainstorm together some money saving techniques. I'm going to share with you some of our history as some of what we've done in the past. We've managed to weather some recessions. So there's a lot of advice from there. Uh, but also what I'd love to do then is get everybody in who wants to on camera to have a conversation with me. So we're going to cover analyzing your personal and your business expenses. We're also going to talk about your money saving techniques for the business as well as personal money saving techniques and the outcome is that you are going to get control of your spending but you're not going to become scrooge and can i just highlight i need to apologize like every other day to to my wife hey let me come back on screen in a second because um back in the day when i was uh, a young lad i got myself into loads and loads of debt and then i just focused on everything that i ever had to invest in i would overthink it to the point where we would never buy it um i've since learned the errors of my way and i have a much more balanced look on how to manage my money etc but i've kind of left my poor wife in this situation now that wherever she goes she'll pick it up and she'll be like oh i don't know do we need it <sighs> so i apologize right let's switch over and let's deep dive into this so uh, so many things on my screen. So the first thing I want to talk about is analyzing our personal and our business expenses. And these are both going to have a massive impact on your business. And you must remember as well that your personal expenses also have a massive impact on your business. So if we were to imagine that when you are um, when you are drawing down your salary from your business, whatever decisions you're making personally dictates usually the amount of salary that you're having to pull down from your business, and that can therefore negatively impact what you're having to do in the business itself. The business has more pressure on it because you and maybe your partners, etc., all have to download. Uh, sorry, have to pay yourself a larger sum because of 
perhaps not so wise decision in your personal finances. So that's why we're looking at both. So what we always uh, recommend everybody do is, first of all, review all of your current business expenditure. And the easy way to do that would be to go and take a look at your bank statements for the last few weeks or months. I would say up to three months. Download your bank statements into, say, an Excel spreadsheet for the last three months. Group those that are reoccurring payments and list out all of the different spends that you have. What you want to do is you want to know what each one of those is and why you are spending that money. So we'll go into that in a, a little bit more detail, but go through the bank statement for the business and itemize every single element, itemize what's a monthly, what's a yearly subscription and what's just one off. And also maybe what projects each one of those are related to. Next, what I want you to do is to review your personal finances. And I highlighted that that's both your personal finances, but also get your business partners to look at their own finances as well, to make a list of what it is they're spending. They don't have to show you because I get that that's private, okay? But they at least need to be looking at what they're doing, as do you, to see whether or not you can actually reduce the load on your business overall. And then once you've got all of this data together, you want to have a look at your current business costs. Are your current business costs reasonable? So is there anything that you could be saving money on? For example, you could be saving money on your hosting. You could be saving money on a whole load of software as a service products that you are utilizing that you frankly don't need to be utilizing. So take a look at your current business costs and decide, are these reasonable? Next one, have a look at, um, is your businesses impacted by the money that you and your colleagues have to draw down and can there be any savings made there? And then finally, look at your spending decisions overall. Can they be improved? Now, to improve your spending decisions, what we have to do as a business is to remember something that I bat on all the time about, and that is remembering your why. So let me just switch back to camera a second. Um, you'll have heard of so many times when we start a business, we need to understand who it is that we serve. We need to understand why we're serving them. We need to understand what we do for them, what superpowers that we have, and what value that it, that is adding to those people. And that becomes um, our client avatars, etc. So we get to build up a picture of who it is that we're serving and what it is that we're doing for them, what problems that we're solving for them. And this is absolutely essential to the overall mission that drives our business. But it's also absolutely essential because it becomes what we talk about all the time. If you're not aware of what Agency Trailblazer is, then we are a community of web designers, design agencies who are all seeking to build an agency that we love. I know the exact target audience who is watching this, that is web designers, freelancers, agency owners, et cetera, who want to learn from all of the different people in the group. I know that I can provide valuable uh, content to to that specific audience, which means the spending decisions that I make in my business are all based around what it is that I'm delivering to their target audience. Let's have a look at this slide and we'll just talk through it quickly. So do your spending decisions. You need to ask yourself this every single time. Serve the mission that you have, or is it just a nice to have something that you're a little bit excited about? Do you actually need, for example, uh, the pool table? <laughs> um, in your, do you need to buy a pool table? I don't know, that's a really bad example, but I know a lot of agency owners like big glass offices with pool tables. Um, do your spending decisions support your um, personal ambitions? And that's within the business as well as you yourself. Does this particular spending decision distract you from your goals? And this would be very pertinent to some of the online software as a service stuff that is constantly coming out. We'll see a shiny new toy and get really, really excited by it. And before we know it, we have a subscription to something that we use. It takes up tons and tons of our time because we're trying to learn it. And then eventually we forget about it. And it's just drip feeding money out of our bank. And a great example for, for that would be StreamYard. I did that. In fact, I was only talking to Tristan just the other day and he was like, have you seen StreamYard? And I was like, yeah, I used to use that years ago. So I, I jumped on to have another look because he was like, you really need to look at this. It's, it's really clever. So I went out and looked and I had a look and apparently I've been paying for $25 a month for the last uh, year. 
I had no idea. I'd forgotten all about it. So there's a great example of how I could have saved a whole ton of money because I wasn't using it. I got excited by it. I used it twice. I totally forgot about it. And there it was draining cash from my bank. So even though I preach, you need to check your bank statements, I still forget things. We're all human. So this is a really good opportunity for us to go ahead and do that. And also, does the spending decision that you've made hinder your progress? <clears throat> Very often, we might be attracted to a new product because it's going to be cheaper, but actually it could hinder our, our progress. So a great example of that was when I decided to go to um, use Zoho. So we, we had the entire infrastructure for Google um, G, G Suite set up, but what we wanted to do was uh, to save money and we had all of these different apps and Zoho were saying, hey, we've got Zoho One and you can sign up for Zoho One and have everything all in one basket. You'll have your project management, you'll have this, that and the other. And Zoho One, don't get me wrong, is absolutely phenomenal. There are amazing tools in there, but our workflow just did not match it. We moved over to save money. We did save hundreds of dollars per month on lots of different subscriptions that we were using. But we now had a whole load of disparate systems that we had to relearn how to use and couldn't quite match to our processes. So we ended up, our progress was hindered by the fact that we were trying to save money. We thought we were doing the right thing. We we're trying to save money here, but actually we were using something completely different. And I learned through that, that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because sometimes saving money is actually ensuring that you are using the right tools that match your processes that allow you to be as productive as possible. So sometimes when something is a little bit more expensive, that's not necessarily a negative because you could be making money or saving time through the productivity that you're having. Let's switch back over to our uh, spreadsheet and let's take a look here at some money saving techniques, tips or tricks. So this is a non-exhaustive list. I've had to edit this out a little bit because we are in different times. But the first thing I would say is negotiate your bills. Now we are in unprecedented times. So no negotiating your bills and negotiating with suppliers may be essential. A lot of businesses are really struggling right now. Projects have been paused. And there's a lot of stress out there. There's a lot of worry. Governments are having to try and bail businesses out. I know that they can't do everything for everyone, etc. So this is a very difficult time. And this is the time where you can negotiate with your suppliers, have a conversation with them uh, to see what can be reduced, what can be taken away, um, what could be paused. If you don't have the cash flow right now, can something be negotiated to be paid later or spread out over multiple payments over a few weeks a month? So it's really, really important to have those those conversations because you don't want all that money just disappearing out of your account straight away. So negotiate your bills and negotiate with your suppliers. The first bill that I would think of is your internet and telephone bill. And many internet and service providers here in the UK are being really, really generous. Um, if you give them a call, just explain to them that your cash flow is dramatically reduced and they'll probably either reduce uh, what you have or just give you a special offer for a few months. Um, so be sure to do that. I would also recommend that you reduce staff efficiency. And I really am not recommending firing people right now, not in this time, that would be the worst thing ever. Um, but you can at least ensure that they are being efficient, give them the tools that will allow them to be more efficient, but also review what their strengths are to make sure that they are working to the fullest capacity possible. Now, this may seem an odd one, but I would also encourage you to outsource uh, just as a reminder that your time is actually the most expensive resource in your business. And if you are spending tons of time building stuff for yourself when you could actually outsource that at a lower cost to someone else whilst you focus on growing your business, then you're actually going to get better return on that investment. You might be spending two, three hundred, four hundred dollars getting something designed um, on, say, Upwork or something built, maybe two thousand dollars on a project. If the project's worth 10K, you're spending two thousand dollars, but you're also then having the relationship and project managing and looking for other leads and bringing more business in, then that actually is a very good setup. So don't forget that outsourcing is not necessarily a cost if you can get some of that back through the efficiencies of your own time. Um, I would also recommend you change your marketing practices because right now the entire world has completely changed and we can't all go to events. 
Um, we can't necessarily send out uh, tons and tons of deliveries and mailers, et cetera, because the mailing system and the delivery system is just completely overwhelmed right now. So what marketing practices can you switch over to? Can you actually invest your marketing into online marketing instead of print, instead of all the events that you may have been sponsoring or exhibiting at, et cetera? So take a look at those. There's actually a couple of episodes on money, but there's also episodes on social media marketing strategies as well. So be sure to check out um, that episode. Uh, it's one of the most recent 250 something, but I'll come back later and put in the descriptions links to all of these helpful podcasts. And then finally, what you can do is you can partner with other businesses. Um, so if for you, it's quite expensive for you to provide a particular type of service, it might be more cost effective for a partner agency to deliver that part of the service. So for us, we're trying to do SEO. If I try and do SEO and I pay a freelancer in or a consultant to come and do some of that for me, but I also have to project manage them. That can actually get quite expensive for me. Whereas um, if we were to um, partner with an agency, for example, uh, SEO Hive with Pete Everett, then they would actually be able to take over the entire project management of that and do the work for us all as a white label solution, whilst I'm again focusing on what I do best. And in these times, we are so better together. Um, uh, we're all in this together, I think, is one of the phrases um, of uh, of a COVID generation, I believe now. We are, you know, we're all in this together. So if you can partner with other agencies to add value to your customer offering um, and perhaps uh, white label each other's work or do whatever you can. They, they are great ways of you being able to save on your own costs, but also add more value uh, to your clients as well. So these are just a few business ideas that you could be looking at, but also there are some personal um, money saving techniques as well. Now, before we continue, I've just received a question. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, Facebook. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've just had a question in from Andy Flint um, saying, could uh, Cloudways negotiate their fees? And yes, uh, that, well, that you can have a conversation with them. That was from Andy Flint. So Andy, I would recommend that you contact Cloudways and ask them for help if you need any help on those, uh, those elements. All right, let's, like, let's take a look at the personal money saving techniques. And just as a reminder, uh, we're going to get other people on in a second and have a conversation. It's not all just me. But as a reminder, um, our personal spending decisions do have an impact on the business. If we can reduce those, uh, that will allow us to... Um, that will allow us to edit more. So, uh, sorry, I'm getting messages and I just need to close that message down. So it's uh, right. So we'll get other people on as well to get more ideas. So um, personal money saving techniques. The first thing that we do all the time is meal planning. And uh, meal planning is incredibly important right now because food is pretty scarce, but we've done it for quite a few years now. We've got a meal plan. We get all of the ingredients in each week, and then we have every single meal planned out. So we know exactly what we're going to cook. And we spend approximately 50 pounds a week on our food. That's including milk, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculously cheap because we're able to buy the flour for the pastry, et cetera. We're able to buy all of these elements, and that has a significant cost saving. We used to spend about 150 pounds a week on our uh, food shopping, but now because we've got meal planning in place, we don't have to spend so much. And equally at this particular horrible time where there is a lot of demand on resources um, at the supermarkets, et cetera, meal planning is pretty much essential because that's gonna allow you to buy less, but do more with less. Uh, there's a video that's been going around saying that one of the amazing things about uh, these times right now is the fact that people have learned how to cook more, how to create stuff from ingredients and be more creative. So I'd encourage you to be more creative with, uh, with what you have, with the food that you have available and make some plans because it will sig significantly save you money. If you imagine we've saved around 400 pounds a month, um, I think by meal planning, because we used to just buy ad hoc stuff and ready meals, et cetera. Um, let's go back to the sheet. The other thing would be bulk buying. Now that's actually something that you can't do very well right now, but certainly buying for the next two weeks or the next week, et cetera, is something I would recommend. So and I would probably recommend this is something you do later on when everyone's calmed down. Um, also, have a look at your uh, personal insurances, et cetera. So I would recommend review your bank account uh, and insurance costs, because very often if you are with a bank, they will have a whole load of extra services that you could add that would save you an awful lot of money on all the other insurances. For example, I pay for a premium bank account. It's something like 10 pounds a month, but 
within that, I get all of my uh, travel insurances. I get all of my telephone insurances and all of those sorts of things. There's a little health plan in there and a doctor's uh, call in there as well. So there's all sorts of benefits that I'm getting for that 10 pounds, which is, oh, there's car, um, I can get car recovery as well in that. So there's all sorts of those that are saving me a whole ton of cash uh, as as a as in my personal finances, which again mean I don't have to draw as much down. A good old-fashioned one would be mend and repair. We are in interesting times, aren't we? Even trying to get hold of stuff on the internet is pretty hard. So I would recommend learn how to sew. There's a good videos on there. And I learned to sew when I was a little kid. I highly recommend uh, mend and repair. Darn those socks, darn it cheesy joke, I know, but you can actually make the most of what you already have. And I would encourage you, especially in these times, to pick up these skills because these will continue to help you. Purchasing secondhand, we do this all the time. Why not? So if you go on eBay, you will find lower cost items. Uh, people may be selling a camera. Maybe you want to go uh, and start live streaming on the internet and buy an expensive camera. Don't go to Amazon and buy it. Go to eBay and buy something secondhand or even go down to the local charity shops uh, once we're all allowed out and Pick up, see what see what there is to pick up. Um, also, sell your old stuff. Again, this is <clears throat> this is all personal. Uh, this is all personal advice to reduce your pressure on your business. Uh, but sell what you're not using. Um, great example of this is Tristan. He uses Facebook Marketplace, and I'll probably get him to to share a little bit about that as well. Um, he did a move where they're traveling now around the UK. And they wanted to get rid of a whole load of elements in their house and they put them all on Facebook marketing, sorry, Facebook marketplace. And they were literally selling stuff. Uh, yeah. Matt Davis has just said over on my other screen that he could set, uh, Tristan was flogging all of his stuff, laughy face, but yeah, Tristan did an amazing job at getting a whole load of, uh, elements out there off of his plate as it were. So I was really impressed. Um, but what I would love to do is open this up, actually. Let's just do a quick, uh, oh, sorry, I, I didn't realize I was on screen. Let me just do a quick recap. Um, let's go over here, and then we're going to get a few of you on screen. So very quickly, um, what we've talked about here is we've talked about the importance of reviewing our personal expenditure and our business expenditure. Uh, then what we've talked about here is remembering our why. So for every spending decision that we've made, or that we are making, we need to make sure that it's serving our mission, it's supporting our personal ambitions and our business ambitions and goals. Uh, it's not distracting us from our goals and it's not hindering our pro progress. Uh, we also then talked about some money saving techniques for our business. So that would be negotiate the bills or with, uh, negotiate with suppliers, especially in these times when people should be a little bit more understanding. Review your staff efficiency, look at outsourcing where you can maximize your own time so you can help grow your business. Uh, we talked about changing marketing practices, so investing in some online marketing lower cost, easier to track, et cetera, as well as partnering with other people. We then talked about personal money saving techniques. I just dropped a few as an example, but the whole point of this call now is to open it up to everybody else um, where we can all share our business and our personal um, money saving tips. So for that, it's a complete wrap and we need to switch over to my screen and we're now going to get interactive with everyone. So let me move this over here. And Tristan, I hope you are there, mate, because I am going to bring you in as a panelist. Tristan, I've unmuted you. Tristan, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Give me one second to get the old camera on. Oh, hey. look at that beautiful man. Hey, how are we doing? <laughs> Matt Davis just said, I hope he's wearing clothes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That was good. good. Tristan, I would love to get from you. You're really good at this. Is just a few uh, money saving tips from yourself. I've shared a few on that uh, spreadsheet, not spreadsheet, PowerPoint, but I would love to hear from everyone else. And you're good at this because you're Just before I launch into this, someone over on Cloudways did say, could you share the PowerPoint so that they can have a look back over it? Because it's got Absolutely. Some great I will share it as a shareable link. Right. I'm going to I'm going to go on mute just and let you do like a two minute spiel. Cool. Whilst I share that PowerPoint link. That's optimistic that Lee thinks I can fit it into two minutes, but he knows I talk fast. So um, <laughs> like Lee said, I have um, we were planning to actually travel Europe. So we used Facebook Marketplace and we literally sold about 150 items over the space of about nine days um, on Facebook Marketplace and actually got more money in than we actually ever paid for it. So um, he's absolutely right. Um, decluttering, get rid getting rid of things um, that you don't necessarily need or use anymore. Um, is a really good idea. Facebook Marketplace is really good. Gumtree is also a really good place that you can do that. 
Um, there's a whole load of different things. eBay, uh, obviously, you can look at there might be local um, groups on Facebook as well as the marketplace um, itself, uh, which is a good way to get rid of it. With, re with regards to saving money, um, being in the creative industry, we do, uh, we're a digital media agency. So for us, we have to use things like the Adobe Suite. Uh, and Lee said, go and negotiate. Um, uh, join the call. Adobe actually are doing two or three months free. My suggestion would be don't go to do the cancel option, which was my original thing. Get on chat with them and you seem to be able to get three months um, with a credit on your account because they want to they want to support you. They want to help you through the tough times and you can get three months where you can carry on trying to earn and stay uh, with them as a product. Uh, another one that we've done is if you use all your credits, if you're an Audible user, um, if you go to cancel, you use all your credits, you have to have used them and then um, go and cancel the account. What it will do is it will give you the option to have three months for half price on Audible as well. So you don't have to leave. You can carry on educating, carry on getting the credits. It just goes down to half the price as an option there. Um, what else have we had? It's a couple of other things. Um, it's always like Lee said, it's worth having a review and talking to all the different providers that you've got because you don't know um what people are doing uh, what the options are for you always just ask what they can do to help you out and explain your situation um so yeah that's a couple of different things um also talk to people there are uh, i'm currently in the middle of um helping the guys over at iographer get uh, more iographers into people's hands uh, and i said look i'd be more interested rather than actually partnering and making any money on it to actually save people money and get them into people's hands to empower them to then share their knowledge. Um, so I've been talking to Dave at Iographer about, get, if you don't know what an Iographer is, it's the mount that we put our phones in that we use um, that allows you to then um, be able to add microphones and lights and things like that and have it steady so that you can turn your phone, which is all you need to broadcast, um, you can turn it into like a mini studio um so there's loads and loads of things there um one hack that we had for um like the lighting that we use for when we're doing video instead of going specifically looking for ring lights for cameras instead of doing that we actually went and bought a light box which came with four ring lights um, for a lot less than it was to buy the ring lights on their own we didn't need the box but we've got it as an option now um so that comes in quite handy my mum has actually just invested in one so if you watch her you'll catch that later on as well um, i think i'm well over my two minutes Lee. yeah so you are i was like how am i going to tell him to shut up but uh, can you make sure that you paste your link because you've got a whole load of things on amazon that you recommend that oh yeah are, let me drop the i mean right now it's hard to buy stuff on amazon i am fully aware um but they're, they're certainly there when uh, they're certainly handy now what i'd love to do you might as well hang with me tristan because i believe i can get more people to join us um so i am promoting leanne i have already pre-warned leanne that she's joining as a panelist um, so she'll be here. Here's Leanne. I'm unmuting you. There's Leanne. So Leanne, otherwise Hi. known as Doctor Who today. Yes. Um, you were sh sharing in our comments some of your top tips and tricks, uh, especially on cooking and that. Do you mind sharing a few? Yes. So for the last probably two years or so, my friend and I actually have been getting together and bulk making our lunches. Oh which has been nice when working out of the house now that we're stuck at home, can't really do it. But the thing that we found was actually really great. We make, we store all our lunches in mason jars. So I have a crap ton of mason jars in my house. Um, you For know, the English the, people, what's a mason jar? I don't know. I don't like know. One of those glass think jars. It's like, like a, a big jar? jar? Like, like, a, the like a canning jar. Oh, okay. I know what you mean now. Okay. I don't know. They're called mason jars. <laughs> Are they? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Pray so continue. we use like we use the two cup size, which is amazing for like soups and stews, curries, things like that. And then you know it doesn't leak because the leak proof lids. Um, and then you can use like the four cup ones, and you you put like your salads in them. So if you kind of just Google, you know, like mason jar salads, um, yeah. you'll find you know the the way to make it so that they don't get all soggy. So we'll usually make probably about 10 to 12 lunches each week to get us through um, most of the week. And then by Friday, we get something fun because yeah. we get tired of the same thing after four days. No, um, I, so, I mean, that's 
it, it helps us to eat better. And it also just saves a lot of money on buying food. And it also just saves from going, okay, I'm hungry. What do I want? <laughs> And it's just, you know, you reach into the fridge and there's your lunch. Interestingly, talking about the bulk buying, yeah. uh, I've got a group of friends in Australia that literally do that. They send a message out, I think it's a WhatsApp group, and they say, look, I'm going to this specifically for health food shops and stuff like that, whereas mm. the stuff is more expensive. And so they go and buy in much bigger quantities to get the discount because they're buying like that. And then one person's responsible for then splitting it out to everybody and everybody chips in for it. So. Yeah, definitely a good idea. Do you, so, um, you know, with, with the lunches, you do it just for the whole week, Leanne? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's the whole week. So you are you freezing stuff for these hot lunches? Are these... Some of the soups we will freeze. If we right. end up getting extras, then yeah, we'll freeze them for those weeks that we're lazy and, you know, we didn't get together or, you know, just kind of busy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes we'll just make extra. I've got like an eight-quart um, instant pot, so we make a lot of the soups and stews in that. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes there's there's extras. So when we do have extras, we will freeze them. Yeah. No, makes... Sometimes you're like, oh, I need a lunch and I don't have anything. But the, totally. the freezer stash is kind of dwindling right now. We're cheating and doing it the other way. We're using a slow cooker. And instead of cooking for the meal now, we're cooking a couple of meals um, so that we can keep it on the bubble and um, yeah. have it ready for the next one or for tomorrow. Yeah, we we use the slow cooker sometimes, but uh, the instant pot's just easy when we're getting together and making our lunches. So Do, my friend uh, and I have a really good system, and I miss making my lunches with her. Oh no! But can you not do that on Facetime? Well, that was my next question: is how are you being impacted by this? Because I believe you you guys are pretty much locked down or social distancing at minimum, aren't you as well now in Canada? Yeah, so uh, on Wednesday, they in Ontario anyway, they closed yep. down all non essential businesses. So, mm -hmm. and then they just um, passed a law that groups of five or more are now illegal. Oh, wow. Can't, you can't get together with people anymore. We're groups of two, I think, is illegal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, oh. we're stuck in our homes right now. Well, that, but my yeah. question was how is that impacting like your, your cooking, et cetera? Is that no impact whatsoever because you're already used to doing it other than not being able to physically do it with your friend? Well, normally, you know, like my friend and I get together and, she, you know, we each kind of take parts of it. Um, yeah, she's yeah. really good at chopping and she does the onions because my eyes and onions, <laughs> they don't, they don't mix. <laughs> yeah. I cannot, I can't even stir onions. My eyes just burn. Yeah. <laughs> it's brutal um so we haven't had we, like we haven't been able to get together probably in the last two weeks or more which is yeah. kind of sucks no i hear you so oh now, now my kid and i are Martin. just eating peanut butter and banana sandwiches every day <laughs> that sounds good. amazing not really they're not as filling where, where did you get the bread <laughs> i found some you know what i went to the grocery store last week just at opening, I got toilet paper, bread, eggs. I did not get flour. You maybe like, should live broadcast this. Everyone will be coming around. <laughs> I mean, for here, the, the stores are still stocking up nicely. Just don't try to go too late in the day for some of the, the good stuff. Um, but I also do make my own sourdough bread. Um, I just baked a loaf yesterday. Um, but it's not as good for sandwiches. It's more good for snacking on so last last butter. question and, and this obviously is not going to be the cooking show but i'm really enjoying this um <laughs> <laughs> do you also do the old sourdough um uh you starter? Know, the, the starter yeah. yeah yeah you are such a cooking nerd i you learned i learned recently i had a, i had very bad luck with sourdough starter i molded a bunch of it <laughs> i had to keep getting more from my friend i'm like i broke it again oh no but I, I've learned how to make it properly. Yeah. So I, I shared that link in the the chat earlier. Oh, brilliant. Uh, well, well, what we'll do is I'll go through the chat because I'll make some notes and then we'll put these because we're also live streaming out there. So there's some people who won't be able to see the Zoom chat. <laughs> now, Mr. Suttle, I would love to just uh, get you to talk a little bit. You look a little bit shocked about that. Sorry, mate. Just wondering if you had any business or personal money saving tips that you would recommend for our listeners and watchers um well hello everybody um yeah so 
Actually, I'm actually going through one that you mentioned in your checklist at the moment. Um, I'm re moving every moving all the hosting during this uh, lockdown period because uh, unfortunately we did lose one client who had quite a heavy traffic. Um, but as a bonus to that, uh, it was a client that wasn't really generating much money for us just on the hosting. So it's been a sort of like good and bad, but the good thing is that we've re reevaluated what hosting we're using and yeah. we're now moving over to a lower grade hosting, still fast, because um, we're going to be hosting with Cloudways. Um, but, you know, we don't need the, 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 the traffic on those sites that we'll be hosting on there won't be as much so we can probably use the $20 plan or something like that. So yeah, that's stuff we've been doing for the business. Um, had a bonus because we decided to upgrade our our internet speed with uh, the, the, the ISP just before this happened. Happy days. So it's great for me because right now my wife's in another room doing a, a video call with her company i've got my team on slack my son's upstairs doing virtual <laughs> school uh -huh. uh, i've got my daughter painting down on the floor next to me so it's all a bit of chaos but luckily we you know we we reinvested in in having higher internet speed um yeah. And a great thing is too, probably a lot of you know that I, I have an agency and I have an office, uh, but everyone's working remotely. We're actually day 15 of a lockdown here where, with curfews and everything, which is pretty scary. But yeah. um, the cool thing is that everyone is managing to work remotely. I've, I've been managing, half of my team is remote, but this, this team never worked remotely before. They've always worked in the office and we're doing really well. So I'm actually reevaluating is, do I really need an office? And you yeah. actually built one as well. Yeah, but I can rent it out. Yeah, so, so you know. that would generate you an income and you would also have all of your team and you get more time with your family. How amazing is that? Yeah. When a winner chicken dinner. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think, but it is quite stressful as most of you with children know trying to work from home yes and juggle schools and things like that so um yeah i mean there's a lot of things to 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 consider um money saving tips just what you've mentioned as well we've always been doing meal plans for the week yeah. um and this week we're deciding to do what leanne mentioned which is you know cooking bulk because it's a bit like stressful having to cook lunch every day and, and, and dinner and and try and work um, yeah. but yeah i've been looking at as well at um, software that i've got uh <laughs> going through my app sumo deals going do i really need that no <laughs> you know uh are we using this um oh, and just a top tip honing honing down on software that we do use and is productive. I'm actually, yeah. I use the free version of Slack and I'm yeah. actually upgrading to, to the paid version, maybe. Yeah. So on, on AppSumo, I would highly recommend that you look at anything you've bought over the last 60 days that you're definitely not using. Because now and again, I've been able to inject like $200 into my account because I realized I wasn't even using that. Oh, like, yeah. Refund, refund before the 60 days refund. is up. So uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, AppSumo. I think they're just going to get a run now of people going, oh, yeah, forgot about that. Um, but I would highly recommend that. But yeah, you're, you're totally right, mate, that this, uh, this whole shift has made us think, do I actually really need that office or do I need as big an office or could I use only a part of the office so that, you know, I've got somewhere to go to now and again, and maybe we could all go virtual, etc. It's a, a massive, exciting shift, really. So I'm, I'm intrigued yeah, or I could, where it's going to go. I mean, I've got um, a WeWork and another sort of office place around mm. the corner, which I could just hire the meeting room, you know, yeah. for an hour, two hours. Just need, need a times, break and or it. go to the coffee shop to get away from your family. <laughs> yeah. which i can't right now because it's locked in <laughs> no luckily i've got my dog Sorry. and i can go out that's the only thing i can do 
I'm, 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 I'm running up and down the stairs in my building in <laughs> nice. every morning nice. to keep fit. <clears throat> well, we yeah. also have on the uh, call... Yeah. Oh, sorry. We've also got on the call Young Beth Livingston. Young Beth, how are you? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and I'm loving the cap. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, that's the airport code for Charleston, South Carolina. That's where my daughter lives. I love the watch. Could you just say code a few times for me? Huh? Could you just say code again? Just just for me. I, code, code, code. I oh, just love your accent. Well, I'm a Southern girl. <laughs> I'm originally from South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah, actually, if I shut my eyes, <laughs> say Jolene. Say what? <laughs> say Jolena. <laughs> Jolene. Oh, Jolene. Jolene. Um, Jolene. Yeah, so, but see, I, I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. They actually have uh, an accent that's much more Bostonian. Yeah. All right. Nice house and Cat. Trad Street and Copa Rava. Yeah. And then um, I moved away when I was in the, like the sixth grade. Yeah. Um, and then I moved to a place where they were very Southern and they said, nice white rice. And uh, so I, if I talk like my family, my friends made fun of me. And if I talk like my friends, my family made fun of me. So I, I tried very hard not to have an accent at all. And for a period of time, I didn't. But now I'm relaxed and I don't care. <laughs> well, you're in a great position because you were sharing with us on our last call uh, that we had last week that you've shifted, haven't you, from agency life and you're now content creating, et cetera, because you're in an earlier retirement of which I I'm sure you're lying because you don't look old enough. But um, uh, uh, but have you in your, you know, over the last few weeks and months uh, discovered some excellent money saving tips or such stuff you've been doing over the years that people could just apply because people are looking at where they can save in any way? Well, this isn't really a money saving tip so much. And it was actually a comment from you that I immediately sent an email to my financial advisor mm -hmm. and said, buy Zoom. <laughs> so I have yeah. bought some Zoom stock. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, oh, I yeah, I shared that the other week, didn't I? I really wish yeah. I'd, I'd bought shares in Zoom. <laughs> and I went. Holy and and Troy did too. He was he looked at it um in some and yeah. So I was like, okay, that's it. I'm 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 buying some stock. Um, we were we were re uh, distributing my portfolio anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, because uh, he he called me up. He said we need to buy Amazon. So yeah. that was also true. Um, uh, in terms of money saving, when I left corporate in 2016, I cut the TV cord, so I don't have cable. I just have, <laughs> I just have what I can get out of the air with an antenna. Yeah. So, and you can get, depending on how far away you are from the towers, you can get pretty decent TV and you get a lot of PBS channels, which means instead of watching drivel, you're watching important stuff <laughs> like documentaries and things. Um, I will sign up for Netflix every now and then binge watch some stuff and then cancel my membership. Um, because it keeps me from being focused on what I need to be focused on right now. Too much TV. I'm really um, glad you highlighted that, actually. Uh, just real quick. So um, here in the UK, we bought five years ago a FreeSat box, which meant that we could um, watch all of the freely available satellite channels that are out there, uh, but also the Freeview channels. And it also had a few apps on it, which like Netflix and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, we were sp we were spending before that with our we had like NTL TV or Virgin TV as it was back then, and uh, <clears throat> we were spending like ninety pounds a month. So for the last five years, we've saved ninety pounds a month because there's actually plenty on freely available TV and also Netflix if if you need it. Although we did go and buy the Disney Plus for a year for like forty quid. I am so loving it. We watched Sister Act yesterday. Classic. Oh, that's a great movie. Yeah. I love that movie. Of course, I love any music, any movie where they're singing and dancing. Um, so that, yeah, so that's my biggest one would be that, you know, if you can cut the TV cord, but if you have a lot of, if you have little kids or, you know, um, then, and see right now, sports is not a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. They've closed down all the sports. Yeah, so, cancel your sports um, subscription. There's no sports to watch, is there? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, they're, they're like redo, they're reshowing like on Sunday afternoon, which is the big sports day here. I don't know how it is in the UK, but they're reshowing old championship stuff, Yeah. you know? So, um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, well, see, I live alone. So my situation is a little different because I don't have children to feed and that sort of thing. So, um, I just eat crap. <laughs> <laughs> 
So don't follow that advice. Well, I just, I just eat, (laughs) you know, I buy what, what I, what's in the store. If it's there, I'll buy it. And uh, so I don't, I don't have a, that's not a big expense for me, I guess I should say. The food is not a big deal. Yeah. So. No, fair um, enough. I've got a hack on uh, earlier, but now I can't remember what it is. No worries. You're sharing on streaming as well. So uh, anyone who's using Amazon uh, Prime obviously gets Prime Video. But if you sign up to some free courses or $10 courses online, you can actually get a student account over on Prime, which makes it half price, which is worth doing. So if anyone wants that, I'll... I just paid for the whole year on Prime. Dang it. Where were you last (laughs) year? Where was I last week? Oh, also, sorry. Martin was putting in the comments that there's some great uh, theatre shows right now, um, including Cirque du Soleil, Stomp, We Will Rock You, and all that for the kids. And presumably, oh, that's all on YouTube. So there are things that you can absolutely uh, watch on YouTube as well. So, so and, and oh, I do oh. that. I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, especially comics. I've fallen in love with Sarah Millican. <laughs> you got to know who she is, right? She's British. I don't know if I do. Oh, you got to listen to her. She is hilarious. I will try. <laughs> and remember. Matt shared in the comments uh, on Zoom as well, uh, not available to be on camera, but one of the things about we quite often go to buy things when we think we want them rather than when we actually need them. So one of the tips he shared in the chat is about how he puts it in his basket and saves for later. That's actually a double tip because uh, he didn't share that bit, but he shares it there, decides over a couple of days if it's worth getting, if you put it in there, it actually notifies you when the price goes down. So you can actually wait on it. So if you don't need it urgently, put it in your basket, save it till later, and Amazon will message you and update you to let you know when the price has dropped. Awesome. Angie, may, may, my, may I unmute you? How do you do, do? I'm good, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I don't Second have week a lot in a row. of... Well, you've got a big list behind you. I thought you were super organized. I thought you were like, yeah, I got I got some tips to drop right now. Yeah, I'm planned, but I don't know. No, no, Even if you've got questions, that's fine as well. <laughs> in my case, mostly looking at um, not paying things in dollars because the rand tanked oh. against the dollar. So I need to like move mm-hmm. things like hosting and stuff that's in dollars, maybe over back to local stuff, which isn't ideal, but yeah. Yeah, so looking at more That's a really, things. really, really good, valuable tip that is. Uh, so we're struggling as well with the cost side of things. So we've become more attractive to the US because the, the pound is practically the same as the dollar, I think, at the moment. Um, but for us, it means that all of our costs have skyrocketed for a lot of the US stuff that we were spending. Bearing in mind that the rate uh, for some of the stuff I, I bought back in the day on a monthly subscription, it was at 1.8. So now we're at 1.12, I think we were when I checked last or 1.14. So it's ridiculous. And that's a lot of money uh, that just c- carries on going up. But that's an amazing tip. And thank you. Um, I, I also have to go and find some nice UK suppliers, I think, of a lot of things. Oh, Cindy has also put in the comments that right now the Canadian dollar is in the toilet. So any US subscription uh, she is reviewing closely. That was a very polite way of saying it. Young Matt Olson is here as well, who is a fellow Disney fan. Uh, I'm gonna put, thank you very much, Angie. Matt, I'm gonna bring you on if you don't mind. Hello, right. hello, Matt. Good morning from California. Return of the Matt. Uh, what day are you guys in for lockdown? I don't know. It ends in it ends in why. Um, <laughs> ends in what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I maybe this might be our third starting of the third three, two and a half to three weeks. I don't know something like that. It's, Holy moly! Yeah, it's not long enough to. Um, for me, I've like, gotten through about 12 of your podcasts on my walks in the morning. So, oh, that's good. <laughs> 259 in total. So, enjoy. Yeah. If you want to go for, back to the back catalog. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we're doing, I mean, we're doing okay. You know, yeah. I mean, for for guys like, you know, all of us, it, it doesn't change my, my work style yeah. because I'm in my same office. But um, yeah, definitely just a change of vibe and, and you know, trying to figure out where where the next clients are going to come from and what to focus on and how to, you know, uh, dial, dial in and focus in a little bit. That's really good. And on that, then I would recommend my latest episode. So it's episode number 259. I talk about the future of web design. Uh, and uh-huh. we talked about this last week as well on our call, which is, is really that we are absolutely in the industry that people need. Um, yeah. 
to me right? so if we imagine we have this uh and you're in, you're in the same as me you're in the events industry as well aren't you matt so the, oh, yeah yeah so the events industry have obviously been severely uh impacted um let's uh just close that one uh stop video just for martin uh in case right uh, yeah so we're, we're in an industry that's uh really being impacted as well and uh we've all realized that we can do so much online now i mean we knew that you and I knew that. Everyone on this call knew that we can have a meeting on Zoom instead of physically going to the office to go and look at the design reviews or whatever it is. Um, yeah. But now the whole world has come to this point where actually there is so much that we can do uh, virtually. Um, and also, how can I, um, how can I take my bricks and mortar business and get it online and be a digital yeah. business because mm -hmm. this time has nearly crippled me and i need to move on to yeah. online so i can and i can see a lot of companies saying okay we need to get online we need to embrace uh, the new digital renaissance i've been calling it we're actually launching a podcast on thursday called the digital renaissance podcast oh, yeah which no, will I, be I, for I, businesses I, about this exact thing it's like uh, you know hey, hey we're all here matt olson's here anshan's here beth's here tristan's here lee's here martin's here everyone watching this call in our industry are here to help um, so yeah. 259, listen to that one, uh, guys, because that'll inspire you. Carry on, Matt. Sorry. I, on. I, I did listen to it. It is very, it is very inspiring, actually. <laughs> so exciting, <isn't> it? <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah. It, it was good, uh, for sure. Uh, I, I've got lots of ideas, um, yeah. lots of ideas and, and more ideas than I can like corral at the moment. But you know, I mean, I think it's a, about maybe targeting, you know, a couple different industries or one industry, right, to yeah. like help these people get from not having a website or having a crappy website to you know, being able to run, you know, their whole business online. You know, like, for example, around here in my in my area, we're, we're a hotbed for small, like, uh, restaurants. Yeah. Tons of restaurants, and they're all dead if they don't have takeout right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some of them, uh, you, you know, if we figure out a way to get them a website that, um, you know, is affordable and works so that, that people can order takeout through it, you know, maybe that's a way to help those, those uh, little businesses. Absolutely. Uh, we've also had um, a top tip in from Matt, of which I need to put on a bigger screen because I actually can't read my screen right now. So hang on a second. Let me just open this in. So Matt uh, said uh, he's got a tip that he'd like to share uh, would be to stop buying the same day watch uh, those things that you want. It's really easy to keep buying stuff that you think that you need, uh, but it's just uh, it's just results in a pileup of things in your house. I like to add it to a wish list and sleep on it for at least a couple of nights and check out reviews and decide how it's going to change my life. So that's very similar to what I was talking about earlier about, you know, is this spending decision for my business or for my personal going to, uh, is this going to have an impact on my life? Is it going to help me towards my goals or is it a distraction? And he's written, if it's not going to improve my life, then I don't need it. This cuts down my frivolous purchases down to about 90%. My Amazon cart has over 500 things in it saved for later. So I would say that's a very good piece of advice, especially now that we're all on the internet. We've got so much freaking time to look at Amazon um, and eBay. Uh, Tristan knows this. I've been buying a whole lot of stuff off eBay, uh, which is, uh, <clears throat> uh, is, a, is a terrible thing. I have one more question for you, actually, Matt, because uh, you've... I recognize this exact angle from like the last two years of our calls because I'm yeah. pretty much sure that's where you're based. How do you, and it's not related to money saving, but you've got the kids and the family and you've had them around all the time. How do you um, kind of create that kind of work-life uh, integration? Because uh, it might, it was there something we were all talking about last week as yeah. well. And It's chaos, man. Um, it, Excellent. It, it, I'm it, glad you've nailed it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally, totally chaos. Um, <laughs> and it's more chaos. So, you know, um, it, it hasn't been, chaotic enough for me to really solve the problem until now okay uh, so i'm one of those I, I can take i can tolerate a lot of pain before it um really becomes like something that i just need to really tackle yeah. and literally right now um because we're having to homeschool i've got two young daughters that you know that were homeschooling luckily my wife works from home or um has you know half the weekdays off because of her, her practice. she's uh, she works at a children's hospital stanford children's hospital actually so yeah. She's uh, home two to, two to three days a week, so she's handling the school stuff then. But you know, on the other two or three days, I'm going to have to be you know the teacher. So I'm literally going to just block out every minute of my day and, and, and week and say, all right, well, you know, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, I'm a teacher and I'm not doing any any work. But before and after that, 
you know, that's what I'm going to have to put in my work shifts, right? And you have yeah. to work weekends and you have to do all that stuff. I think it's all about time blocking and, and doing the uh, things that are most important and getting rid of all the, all the fluff. Absolutely. Time blocking. That's uh, we, we did a, uh, a family meeting. Uh, so we've, I've kind of worked from home on and off, uh, but we, it was getting a bit of a mess where um, the girls were just constantly coming in and asking questions or calling me into there. And that's so when we ended up having a family meeting of, you know, when the door shut, the door is shut and you, uh, yeah. uh, I, I am working and I'm going to work from eight o'clock till lunchtime and then we can have lunch and chill out or do whatever, et cetera. So time right. working is, is very, very helpful. Um, okay. So what we're going to do folks, thanks so much, mate. Um, I am going to uh, kick you, not kick you off. You're just going to move you back off uh, screen, but moi, you're awesome. Uh, so Thank let you. me just uh, change role. So, folks, all right. So, uh, we are coming into land. Uh, left. Um, I've received a few questions. I think on um, ch on some of the live streams. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump into the live streams and answer some of those questions in comments. What I would love to do for us both uh, for us all, sorry, is to just very quickly recap. I guess this entire conversation, but also recap excuse me, the, um, uh, the, the presentation that I made to you all. And I've shared the link in our comments here. Um, so folks, if you can grab that link, you will be able to share it as well. That's the, the link for my entire presentation. You can paste that into the comments of whichever live stream you're in um, to share with other people. But we'll also make sure that we edit this back and uh, give you all the notes. But let's just go through this again as a quick recap so that you guys can have some action points for the end of this call. Um, so if I now switch over to this, so let's do the Lee Jackson patented recap. Um, so we talked about money saving tips and tricks, and we were explaining that the times are uncertain. So right now we want to make sure that we're keeping um, a handle on our expenses. And we're looking, we've looked during this at analyzing our business and our personal expenses. We've talked about uh, techniques that we can apply to both our business and to our personal lives. And um, we explained the importance of <clears throat> um, getting those expenses down on paper. So your first action for the end of this would be to get those expenses listed for you, both of your business and your personal. So that's your action point. Get those expenses, export them from um, your bank statement, but also export them from PayPal or whatever else it is you might be using because a lot of things get lost in the PayPal black hole. So take a look at those, export those as well and make sure that you've got all of your expenses listed. If you've got some account software, that's even better because your account software, if your accountant's keeping it up to date for you, will have absolutely everything from all of your sources, including you know Stripe, PayPal, et cetera, et cetera. So take a look at those and then ask yourself, what is my why? And do all of these spending decisions match my why? Um, is it serving my mission? Is it serving my ambitions? Is it serving the goals? Is it hindering my progress? And remember, I shared that story about Zoho where I thought I could save a whole ton of money, but actually it was hindering us. So it was actually costing us money in the end. We then shared a whole load of business money saving techniques, including things like negotiating your bills, cutting costs, uh, talking with suppliers, reviewing staff efficiency. So, you know, not necessarily getting rid of them, but uh, please don't, not in these times, but, you know, can you, can they be more effective in different ways, looking at outsourcing to free up your own time um, or passing some of that on to your own staff if you have staff. Also checking, ch changing marketing practices or partnering with other agencies. Remember, we've all got our own unique audiences and if another agency can add value uh, to your clients and that's also going to give them some work as well then that's an awesome way and uh, we also looked at a few money saving techniques including meal planning book bulk buying um reviewing things like your bank to save money on insurance etc repair amend and so on and so forth but also our wonderful panelists who all got promoted uh, as panelists and were very, very kind to share some tips. Also dropped hints like, uh, can you cut the cord on your cable subscription? Because there's a whole load of free to air stuff um, that you could enjoy stuff on YouTube as well. Martin shared that there are some great entertainment live streams, etc., over there on YouTube. Um, I suggested that you could cut a whole load of refunds back from AppSumo. You could also take a look at some of the software that you're using and say, am I really using this? Do I need this? So a great example right now would be Adobe. Um, so we used to pay 40 odd pounds per person for the entire Adobe Creative Suite, but instead we ended up purchasing the uh, Affinity Office, uh, the, sorry, the Affinity solutions where we've got designer and publisher and photo. 
which has replaced our need for any of the Adobe Creative Suite stuff. Um, and that was one-time payments for all of our uh, users, job done. Um, other tips obviously uh, revolved around food uh, with regards to personal um, uh, meal planning, et cetera, negotiating your costs for your broadband and all of those sorts of things. So there's a whole load of things that you can be doing to save money in an uncertain time because what you really want is as much money accessible for you for the essentials like keeping a roof over your head, like uh, keeping the, uh, the food on the table, et cetera. So what we're gonna do folks is we're gonna jump offline um, for everyone who came in to Zoom, thank you very much. We had a whole lot of you come in Zoom. We're going to do this again next week. So I'd recommend if you jump in the Zoom room, you get the opportunity to actually come on this. And then, like I said, we're broadcasting uh, around the interwebs through Cloudways and through uh, Agency Trailblazer. Finally, I'd just love to thank the Cloudways again. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, you have looked after our websites very well for many years, but equally, you also support this community uh, incredibly well. Thank you for all the support that you're giving us, folks. If you, yes, thank you, Matt Olson's just said Cloudways rocks. Um, if you want to know any more about Cloudways, uh, just check them out, cloudways.com. Um, feel free to hit them up as well for any offers because Cloudways are very generous. They always have some sort of offer going on. Um, so if there's any way that you can save money, or if you just need some advice on the setup that you already have with them um, and ask if there's anything that you can do to save costs etc then i'm very sure cloudways would love to have a conversation with you because they're a great bunch of guys so that with that said i am going to clock off and we will catch up in the comments and we will also see you same time next monday we're going to do this all over again with a brand new subject with a hopefully short presentation because i got a bit carried away and then all of you guys in zoom come and join me and let's have a conversation so you're all awesome take care have a wonderful day and God bless you all. And I'm going to hit stop.